Ranbir, I'm here at Early Metal Fab and you can look around at the job shop. It's probably a little bit different than what you have. They do a lot of architectural things here in Connecticut. They have one of our DBS machines. So, on this machine you have a wooden table. The front two thirds right now is behind the machine. And underneath this you have the handling unit. So this is stored away. Afterwards, I will show you, they also made an aluminum pan if you have bigger parts where you can go a little bit lower. So this is when you buy the option of a handling unit. And you bring it up to the vertical. And you have a little bit of a click where you feel exactly where you are in the right position. And then from there, you can uh, rotate the 90 and you can rotate the head, the head goes pretty much endless um, and it indexes at 90 degrees. Um, this indexes every 22 and a half degrees. And then the last pedal down here is your vacuum. I'm going to use a real simple sheet right now to show you. And so right now the vacuum is off and then you hit the button and it comes down. You heard the Venturi in the back. Let me go around here real quick. You have the Venturi here in the back. It shows you which vacuum, what, the, uh, what vacuum is pulled. It's very simple. And from there, the vacuum line goes to the handling unit. So it's a real simple device, no moving parts. So now, when you want, imagine this is a box. So if you want to grind it this way, you go this way. If you want to grind it in the other direction, you grind it this way. If you want to grind the side, you go here, like this. So now you're grinding this way. If you want to grind this way, you just bring the 90 around this way. And I'm going to raise this up a little bit. It's going to make it a little bit more comfortable for me. Um, you know, I think we have the safety string pulled here. Oh, no, sorry. You see right now the machine is, is up with the door open. You have a very simple lever to close the doors automatically and opening them. This is the uh, actuators on the back of the machine. Opening up the covers for the belt access. Very simple and straightforward. Four actuators, two on each side. So there's nothing that you need to lift for the belt chain. And then you can release your belt tension and take the belts off and put another belt on. Alright? So. So. Now you can bring this up and uh, you, of course you need to break it a little bit so that you can, um, that it, it sits high enough. You don't have to get it perfectly parallel to the belt. For one thing it's good to grind a little bit more open on this side than on this side. On the, on the other hand, you also have, always have the brake in the back where you can make infinitely small adjustments to make it parallel. So now you can basically drive this side up here is where you turn the belt on and you control your belt speed from slow to very fast with this switch. So for the purpose of this demonstration, we just go really slow. So now. You can grind here, you can grind your box coming in and out. You have the round part. We're gonna devise something so where you can spin it and do the radius on the edge. So I showed you basically how you get to from this to this. So here you could grind the edge this way. Yeah. These things simple. You can twist the belt around the edges also if you need to. Um, so, 
and going from there. So here we are. And then if you want to go to the front side, you simply uh, spin here. And now you are here. You can do this. And again, we have the same logic here. You can adjust it to the height for underneath the table. And you can spin it 90 if you rather grind it this way. Right? And so you can do all five sides of this part in any direction that you want, perpendicular or parallel. And that's the logic between the handling unit. So, um, I'm going to turn this belt off. You see that you have individual belt pressure that you can adjust for each one of the belts. This is the front belt that is setting there, and this is the back belt that we are setting there. The belt tensioning is not like in the TBS in the end. The belt tensioning on this machine probably hard to see is if it's those lights is up on top where you see the belt come up and down yeah but the lights are a nice addition the nice lights are a very nice addition and this is customer provided even though bill i must tell you we do have a transformer in the machine where you could hook up 110 volt lights you don't need to run an extension cord, <laughs> okay? But you need, you want lights to make it as bright as possible. Um, you see on the bottom, you have on each side a servo motor for the table up and down. The table auto levels by bringing it all the way down and you hit the limit switches, that levels the table. These two struts are only there if you still need to transport the machine. This machine is still sitting on its original pallet. It will be taken off and located. Um, then you can take these out and you have full clearance all the way to the floor and can put in your own fixture. Um, yeah, and then for the work to come on, just take off the vacuum. And if you want to put the back straight on, you simply just um, Fold it. And, and the easy way to do that is actually to go like this. Actually, let me untwist that here. Go like this, right? And then just bring it down to the 90 that way. And this way you don't need to bring it up sideways. Yeah. Um, and this is pretty much all there is to this procedure. Oh. Then you have pressure pieces. You see this here. This is your roll-on pressure piece where you can work on the work piece. And you can either work on the front belt or you push it into the back and you can work on your back piece. But not only do you have a round pressure piece, you can also unlock this here, very simple. And pull this out. put a flat this is a very convenient standard on the on this machine which costs you extra on a dbs i recommend it yes so now you have a flat pressure piece and you can either the flat pressure piece you can either lock or unlock if you unlock it then it adjusts to the surface right or uh, if you once you feel comfortable that you have it exactly where the surface is, then you can also just lock it so that it doesn't change anymore after that, like this. So now it's fixed and it goes, it is where you have it, okay? So, and you can play with the tension in this. This has a counterweight that you can slide on this bar back and forth to balance your pressure pieces. It has a stop for the front and for the back. And um, if you are not working with it, you go to the side. Let me show you um, one more thing on this machine. So you have your independent motors up and down. You also have here, you have a double catch nut because over time, the nut and the spindle can wear. You see underneath here, you have the spindle. Okay. 
keep that nice and greased and clean and so forth. And then you see this little red pin. And this red pin sits on, there's a second nut underneath the, um, the, the load bearing nut that carries the table. And should that nut fail, instead of the table just dropping down, it just drops onto the nut below. And then this red pin will stick out about a half an inch. And at that point, you know that it's high time to replace the spindle and the nut. When I say this is a wear and tear item, it's usually something that you replace every five to eight years. Um, but we felt it was important to give people an indication how much their nut is worn so that the uh, table can't drop off the, the rail, right? They, um, let me give you an impression of the electrical cabinet here. And you can see this is an extremely clean, uh, simple solution. You have your incoming power on the main switch. You have your vacuum switch. You have your main power uh, indicator light. Then you have the small inverter for the table up and down, the big inverter for the belt speed, so that you can control that up and down. You have a safety relay, you have a 24 volt, very simple wide range power supply, a couple of breakers, overload switches, a transformer for the lights, and then you have a couple of contactors and uh, timers, but other than that, uh, just on the bottom then, your connecting points. This is where the main power connects from the outside. And, um, and that's really all there is here. This is made in Germany in at for, in Kuhlmeier in Bad Oeynhausen. Very well made in Germany. And then on the other side here, we already looked at the Venturi. Your electrical air connection is here. The machine is supplied with a pressure regulator already. So all you need to do is hook it up to power. And then and how much there, power, how much air do you need? You need very, very little power, just small yeah. amounts from a normally a quarter inch line supply, which totally suffice uh, because it is really only for the pressure of the, uh, for the belt pressure, which uses very little air. And if you run the Venturi, if you have good uh, vacuum tightness on your part, the Venturi only turns on very, very briefly. You just heard it blip right. there in between. Yeah. Um, and you connect the machine to power to 20 amps, 480 volts, three phase. In your case, you will need a transformer in Canada if you run on 575. And we can provide that for you. This obviously is not standard on the machine. Early metal staff here made this for themselves. Why? Because sometimes you need a little bit more opening height underneath the machine. This is a normal deck. Underneath this, in front of this, you have front half of the table which is right now sitting behind the machine. Underneath this you have your handling unit which we'll get to in a little later and they made this hand so that they have about six inch more opening height. The pan sits simply on the arms left and right on, on the table that moves on the X rotors like all the machines, all cool my machines and it gives you this much more opening height for boxes and so forth. And then you can put fixtures on this in order to own your parts. For example, they made these fixtures, right? And they can be clamped onto the table or whatever you want to do in order to hold your parts. Or you can make slots also where the fixtures fit in. Um, yeah, so this was, I think, originally a picture that was in on a wooden table. So you can put it here, and then you can snap it onto the table. This is really helpful, again, if you need a little bit more opening height, because this gives you just for more than 23 inches, correct, underneath the belt, total opening height, um, even if you are uh, further up. So, that makes all the sense in the world. Um, other than that, like I said, you would have a standard table. So, for right now, I'm going to take this off. They made this from aluminum. One person can hold it.